A glass ball, a crystal ball, or a lens ball. They're perfect for beginning photographers who are trying to learn how to do new things and gimmicky kind of things. They're perfect for making you look at the world in a different perspective and really trying to expand on your creative mindset. So what these things do is that when you put it in front of something, let's see if this focuses correctly, yep. It basically locks focus in the center and makes everything around it vocal and fuzzy and only keeps focus of what's directly in the center of the lens ball. But I'm not gonna do that the whole time because it literally makes my face look warped and I can't stand looking at that the entire time. So when I first got this, I would take this with me everywhere. I always think it's important to have like one kind of gimmick or different kind of tool in your bag to make you think of the world differently when it comes to photography. So when it comes to traveling with these, you want to keep it covered in a soft cloth or in a specific section of your camera bag where there's nothing else around it so that it doesn't get scratched or damaged by potential things in your bag. You also want to be careful when you're holding it outside, you don't want to accidentally drop it on the ground and either crack it, break it, or scratch it. Because unfortunately those scratches will show up in the photo you're trying to take and only make editing a lot more difficult. When you're out in the field with these, you kind of have to use a low aperture. Basically the best I find is around 5 or 6 in that kind of range. You can go down to 2.8 but then the problem you run into is that you may not be able to get the whole ball in focus so it might look a little fuzzier off. But these are great for landscapes or sunsets or beaches when you're trying to line up a landscape or a sunset. You got a subject in front of you that would look awesome upside down. You basically want to line this up with that. So because of the shape and the dimensions and what this actually does, you can get super creative with these when you're out in the field. You can use it to frame a subject, mirror an image or a landscape or an action that's going on. A lot of times I like to put this up by water and mirror the splash behind it. You just want to be really careful when you're around a body of water, especially one that has a lot of waves and salt water, so that a wave doesn't hit a rock and totally just destroy your camera as you're just trying to take a picture of a glass ball. Now because of its shape, you can also use different objects in nature to hold it, mount it, or frame it. One time I used a bunch of little rocks and pebbles I found to frame it perfectly in the desert. Or sometimes, even if you have the smaller version of this, you can find a different way to hold it in your hand or between your fingers to get an interesting kind of shot. When it comes to finding one of these, it's super easy to find online. Just enter glass ball for photography or lens ball and you will find a variety of options. Some people try to charge you about $45 to $30 for a kit with one of these, but you really don't need a kit. All you need is the glass ball, maybe a base for if you're outside and you don't have a sturdy place to put this and it keeps rolling around. The base is see-through and helps you just keep the lens ball intact and in one spot. But these are all you really need to do photography with these. You don't have to worry about special cases or accessories, really just a $15 circle piece of glass. And to mention, if you get one that comes with a base, the base does the same exact thing. So it also gives you a small little square glass cube to even do the same thing with or you come up with creatively as well. So when you get this thing, don't forget to also try to use the base as another way of looking at stuff. So that's about it for today. It's just a video about a glass ball that may come with a glass cube. These allow you to look at the world differently and think creatively and outside of the box versus just what you see through your camera. Just remember if you're using them or using them together, use an aperture from a range of f5 to f8 so that everything that you're seeing through the ball stays in focus and everything around it stays blurry. Then go through your shots and find the ones that really frame your subject the best and think of what kind of subjects would look cool upside down or which subjects would look cool straight up and then the background upside down. And it's a great beginner gift for new photographers trying to practice different forms of photography. So that's about it for now. I'll see you guys later.